Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll uh, give just a few moments uh, for people to get tuned in. Uh, <clears throat> it's not quite nine o'clock for a Bible class, um, but a happy Easter to all of you. Uh, this is a Easter that we will all remember, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> but again, we'll uh, just give a few moments for people to get uh, tuned in. Uh, to get uh, hooked up on online. Um, beautiful day today. Um, I know up north uh, in Wisconsin they're getting two feet of snow in a day, so we can be thankful for uh, for the beautiful day that we do have today. Um, we're in John chapter six, uh, and I'll mention that again later on. But if you want to grab your Bibles. Um, and open up to John chapter 6. That's where we will be starting uh, in just a few moments. In our, uh, some of our previous uh, videos, um, you know, where we, uh, as, as we do this, you know, as I think this is what the third, third or fourth week into this. I can't even remember. Um, but the, vi the video and the sound quality gets better every time. Um, and uh, I know I, I've had some feedback that uh, uh, we can't have the heat, the, the furnace going, because that, that sound kind of uh, muffles and, and metals things up. So uh, I'm trying to do this without the furnace on. So we'll uh, uh, see how that goes. I mean, I'm, I'm fine today. It's not, we're not getting two feet of snow, so. Um, we have several of you tuning in, which is great. Again, we're in John chapter 6, John chapter 6, and again, uh, as we do this, I don't want you to just be watching me, I want you to be participating, uh, having your Bible in front of you, um, reading along with me as I go, um, and, uh, and together uh, we'll uh, study God's Word. All right, so I have about a, a minute after 9 o'clock. Um, oh, today also is going to be a little shorter. Uh, it's going to be a little shorter Bible class. We'll only go for maybe about a half hour uh, in order to get uh, ready for Easter, but uh, that, that's okay. Um, and that's also a reminder that uh, the service will be at 10 o'clock. I'll turn on the live feed <clears throat> beginning at about uh, 5 to 10, uh, and we'll have some organ music uh, to begin our uh, Easter service. Um, but again, that, that'll be in about an hour, so, uh, so stay tuned for that as well as we, uh, uh, we worship our risen Lord Jesus this morning. All right, so I have several online now, so we'll uh, go ahead and, uh, and again, open up your Bibles. If you don't have, have it, go get it. We're in John chapter 6, um, in, in, uh, as we're going through the Gospel of John. Now, <clears throat> uh, I, I have to mention at every, um, the start of every Bible class, uh, the golden thread that runs through the Gospel of John. Uh, it's exposed to us, actually, again, John chapter 20 is uh, the account, John's account of the resurrection uh, of Jesus, which we'll hear uh, in our service later on. <clears throat> but after the resurrection account, <clears throat> we have Jesus visit, uh, meeting with his disciples. We have Jesus, uh, well, and then Thomas wasn't there, he missed out, and so, so then uh, Jesus appears with the disciples again, this time with Thomas. Jesus says to Thomas, here, stick your fingers in my hands and put your hand in my side to see that I am alive and have been crucified but rose from the dead. That's J John chapter 20, and uh, Jesus ends that account, uh, that encounter with Thomas by saying, you believe because you have seen. Blessed, rather, are those who believe and do not see. 
And then immediately it goes to our golden thread, John chapter 20, verses 30, 31. Uh, St. John pulls us out of the narrative and says, Now Jesus did many other signs and miracles in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Okay, so there's the golden thread. That's the purpose John is writing. That's the, 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 the purpose, the, the reason that John uh, records his account. That is, his eyewitness account of, of, uh, of Jesus. And again, and we're going to see that golden thread weave throughout the entire gospel. So, as we read through John chapter 6, uh, try to find that as we read. Okay, so back to John chapter 6. Now that uh, we've got the, uh, the golden thread... Uh, exposed. Uh, I, I suppose we should uh, do a little backtrack of, to, to see where we've, we've gotten. So the first four chapters of John's Gospel, uh, for, uh, first you have uh, the prologue, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John 1, and then it goes to John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh <clears throat> and dwelt among us, Chapter 1. Chapter 2, we have Jesus in Cana in Galilee doing his first miracle. That is changing water into wine, and his disciples believed in him. Then as you go through uh, those early chapters, the world doesn't quite know who this Jesus is. And so he does miracles, and people you know, wonder about it. Well then, that changes in John chapter 5, because in John chapter 5, um, the religious leaders of the time become increasingly, uh, you know, vehemently against Jesus. That's where, where it begins, or where it begins. Um, and so Jesus, in John chapter 5, healed uh, the invalid on the Sabbath. And uh, the Jews got up in arms about that and, um, and uh, you know, questioned him, questioned his authority, um, and uh, became very much against Jesus. And, that, and now that sets the tone for the rest of the gospel, that um, uh, we have two kind of things here. We have crowds and groups of people that, that are rushing to Jesus because, you know, they want to see him. Uh, do his, do these miracles. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, dance, little monkey, I want to see you, sort of thing. Um, and that, so we have that group, and when Jesus does some of these things, some, you know, a great number believe. Uh, they believe in Jesus. So you have that going on. And then you have the Jewish religious leaders that are always going to be against Jesus that are going to be trapping Jesus wherever they, they can. Um, they're going to uh, be testing Jesus. They're going to be scrutinizing everything he says. Okay? Uh, so we have, have all these things at play. Which brings us to John chapter 6. Okay? So after, in John chapter 5, that Jesus essentially made himself equal with God... Uh, for good reason, because he is the Son of God. He is God from the beginning. Um, that uh, we get to John chapter six, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to read uh, John chapter six, one through fifteen. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, 
Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Philip said, or Jesus said this to test him, for Jesus himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii, I would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So let's uh, <clears throat> take this. You know, it's a very familiar Bible account, right? Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, and in fact, this is uh, one of the only miracles that all four Gospels record, right? Uh, so again, thinking about the Gospels, we have... Four individual writers. Um, so if you take take me, uh, you take my wife, and take two of my kids, and uh, ask us all to write an account of the same event that, that we saw, we're on, we're going to have different uh, uh, differing. Um, you know, our writings are going to be different, right? So the way I write is going to be drastically different than what my seven-year-old writes, right? Um, and my seven-year-old may have noticed something that I missed, okay? So that's that, and so keep that in mind as 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 we read through the Gospels, okay? Uh, that uh, you know uh, some got uh, some of the other evangelists write and record other miracles that John does not But remember, remember the purpose or the, the golden thread John said in, in John chapter 20 verses uh, uh, 29 and 30, uh, Jesus did many other signs and miracles uh, that are not written in this book. Remember that. Okay? So, uh, but these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and that by believing you have life in his name. So, um, this then, all four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record this event, this miracle. And so it's familiar to us. We all know it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I, just, I just had a memory uh, of vacation Bible school um, back up in South Dakota, you know, a hundred years ago. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> One of the old, the old church ladies uh, made little barley cakes and brought in some sardines uh, for us to, to eat and to try. And, well, you know how that went. <laughs> uh, you know, the barley cakes were somewhat palatable, but uh, I don't think, um, you know, Sunday school age kids uh, fared with sardines very well. I know I didn't. Uh, but that it just again it shows how um, how well known that this this account is. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit. So again, uh, after Jesus in John chapter five had a conflict with the religious leaders, uh, what does it say? 
he went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Okay, so he leaves. He goes someplace else. Um, and in verse 2, a large crowd was following him. He couldn't get away without being noticed. Uh, and why were they following him in verse 2? Because they saw the sign, that, the signs that he was doing on the sick. So either they were sick or they had some family members that were sick and were hoping to get in on the action. Or again, they wanted entertainment, uh, perhaps, or um, they uh, believed. It probably it was a, a mix between all three of those things. Okay? Um, but that's why people were gathering around you. I know if, if someone like that were living in the world today, they would charge you know, $100 a ticket uh, to perform the miracles. You know, make a little money on the side. But uh, again, that's not the why Jesus is doing these things. Okay? But nonetheless, this is why the crowd follows him. Uh, Jesus went up to the mountain. Uh, verse 4. Now this is the context in which Jesus feeds the 5,000. Verse 4 tells us, Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Okay? And the Passover, we remember, that has to do way uh, in the book of Exodus. Um, Exodus, uh, uh, you know, where God is going to redeem his uh, chosen people, Israel. He's going to remove them from slavery. Um, and uh, um, so he says the ten plagues, uh, you know, we're only dealing with one plague right now. The Egyptians had ten. Uh, and that last plague being the death of the firstborn. Unless you slaughtered a lamb and put blood, the blood of the lamb above your door, and then the angel of death would pass over your house, thus sparing you from death. And uh, once that happened, once God's uh, people Israel were, um, were, were, f were freed and wandering in the wilderness and, and, and then entering into the promised land, every year they would celebrate uh, the Passover. They would remember what God had done in that one event when they were slaves in Egypt. And so they, you know, just, just like, a, uh, you know, today is, is Easter Sunday. Um, so uh, we celebrate Easter uh, every year by doing specific, you know, certain things. Whether it be dye Easter eggs, um, uh, whether it be eat a ham, right? Uh, but, you know, we do, or, or, or my favorite, the uh, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter uh, Easter Eggs. I don't know why those are way better than the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. It's the same chocolate and the same peanut butter. But for some reason, when it's formed into an Easter egg, it tastes way better. Uh, but we do certain things surrounding the, the, the holidays. That's the same thing as the Passover. They do certain things, okay? So uh, this is a time of celebration. This is a time of, of uh, people getting together. Um, and that's the context. That's verse 4. Uh, verse 5, Jesus sees the large crowd, and he asks his disciple. Uh, he's, again, verse 6, he said this to test him. Jesus said, where are we to buy bread? so that these people may eat. Now, uh, Jesus is perhaps testing Philip, you know, because this is still fairly early on in the gospel, okay? And his, his disciples still uh, are not on the fence, but they, they don't yet really get it, right? They don't get yet the, the fullness of who Jesus is. And, and what he is to do, okay? So, um, so Philip, you know, Jesus asked Philip this question, like, uh, and Philip says, oh, okay, uh, don't 
you live in reality, Jesus? It's going to cost 200 denarii. Uh, you know, uh, and that's 200 denarii. That, that's an ex just an insane amount of money, right? Okay? Just an uh, uh, unfathomable amount of money. That, and none of them is going to have that on hand. Okay? So he's, you know, he's using exaggeration here, Philip is. So uh, 200 denarii, I would not buy enough bread for everyone to even just get a little bit. Okay? Um, but then, uh, verse 8, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, comes up. And, and, and you know, I picture this and just, just how foolish Andrew is. Okay? That Jesus asks Philip a question. Well, uh, uh, where are we to buy bread? Because uh, Jesus, again, knows what he's going to do. Um, Philip thinks Jesus is, you know, out to lunch or, uh, you know, <laughs> is uh, not living in reality. And then comes foolish Andrew and says, well, this little kid here has two fish and some bread. Oh, wait. That's not enough for 5,000 people. Now, why did I say that? Right? This is kind of the idea. This is the feeling that, that, uh, that we have here. Um, so, uh, five barley loaves and two fish. And then, verse 10, Jesus says, have the people sit down. Now, here is a very easily missed but beautiful little nugget of, of gold here in St. John's Gospel. Notice verse 10. Everyone be looking at verse 10. Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. Why in the heck would St. John think to record that there was a whole lot of grass where Jesus had the people sit down. And this is the genius of St. John's Gospel. This is the genius behind um, you know, how the Holy Spirit uh, inspired John to write what he wrote. Do you know what Jesus says in John chapter 10? Uh, uh, on Friday, uh, I, I, I had a funeral. I did a funeral. Um, and uh, the gospel reading was from John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Uh, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Okay? Now, uh, what does that make you think of? about Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And in the end of that psalm, you know, a feast is set before us. Uh, my cup overflows. Okay? So here we have the slightest uh, hint back to Psalm 23, back to King David. And we're going to see that Jesus, uh, as, as all of this unfolds, and he says he's the good shepherd, uh, is all connected, is all there. That's why John says there was lots of grass. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And then what does the good shepherd do? He gives me what I need. He fulfills my needs. The most basic need of, of filling my belly, the good shepherd does. And, I'm jumping the gun here, but that's okay. And, is it just, you know, I get a little taste of the bread and I get, you know, uh, 
a little bony piece of fish. No. It says everyone ate their fill. And then there was some left over. This gets, gets us, uh, I'm, I'm uh, blanking on exactly where it is. But uh, Jesus says, oh, this is John chapter 10 also. Uh, I came that they, that is my sheep, may have life and have it abundantly. I love that word abundantly. Because, again, this shows, well, <laughs> this goes back to John chapter 2. Remember the turning of water into wine? There was six stone water jars that held, um, let's see, 50 or 60 gallons. And so when Jesus uh, turns the water into wine, how much wine does he give him? Like 150 or 180 gallons of wine. All of this showing that God, when he provides, he gives in abundance. Okay? That's the point here. Um, that, uh, oh, let's see, where have I got? So, that whole, that whole rabbit hole started with verse 10, where it says, Now there was much grass in the place. Makes us think of John 23. It's a foreshadowing, or uh, Psalm 23. Uh, it's a foreshadowing of John chapter 10, as Jesus says he is the good shepherd. Um, verse 11, Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, okay, now this, where else do we hear these words? On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now remember that. We're not going to get get to, oh, well, we, we may not even get to uh, uh, Jesus walking on water. Uh, but the second half of John chapter 6 is Jesus telling us, I am the bread of life. He who eats my body or eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I will raise him up on the last day. There's the end of John chapter 6. And here at the beginning, we have Jesus taking bread and giving thanks. All right? And he distributed it to those who were seated, so as the fish, as much as they wanted. Again, abundance. Okay? So this is like how we talk about baptism. So uh, even though... Uh, when we were baptized, uh, it might, might have just been a small little uh, handful of water, right? Um, but in baptism, what's going on is as if the Pacific Ocean itself were, were, were uh, blocked off. And baptism is the doors of the Pacific Ocean opening and pouring out on us such as the lavishing of God's grace to us in, uh, in baptism. So when God, when God gives is over and above what we can imagine. Okay? So they get all they wanted. My cup overflows. Remember? John, uh, Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Okay? Um, 12, and when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. Again, to show that when Jesus provided for that most basic need, uh, need to eat, uh, he provided more than they needed because that's who God is. Uh, verse 13, so they gathered them up, them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments for the, uh, from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. Um, and, and notice then, notice here, <clears throat> the response of the crowd. This is what they say. This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Uh, I, I have this problem where I don't remember where I said what to who. Um, 
Anyways, uh, so the people, they get it, and yet they don't, right? So they acknowledge, well, this is the prophet who is to come. That this guy has been foretold to us. So that, and, and that way they get it right. They know that, that this, this guy, this Jesus, is, is different than what they know and what they, uh, what they, they, um, what they usually, or what they expect, but they get it wrong, notice, in verse 15, in their response. Okay? Verse 15. Perce perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. There's the response. And I, I remember, uh, it was Palm Sunday sermon. Uh, Palm Sunday sermon. The people welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem as a king, right? Because they thought he was going to kick Rome out of their land. You know, they, he, they, he was going to send Rome packing, and that he would make them, that is the, the people of Israel, top dog in the world again. That's what they expected out of their Messiah, their king. But notice that's not what Jesus did. Okay? So here they get it wrong because they wanted to crown Jesus king right then and there. Why? Because he gave them a free lunch. Uh, they, they, they thought they were you know, eating off the government cheese. Uh, and so they wanted to make him king. But little did they know, he's not the king that they expect. He is a king, just as we heard uh, Friday, in our Passion reading, uh, um, Pilate asking Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world, Jesus says. Okay? Uh, and so, even though the people were wanting to make him king, he says, that's, that, or he doesn't say it, but by, you know, means of him leaving, uh, he's, he, he's, he's not the king that they're going to expect. And we saw that on Sunday. We saw it at the cross. And we see it today on Easter morning. That the king lives. And he brings life. Okay, this is the kind of king. And how does he bring life? He brings life by dying. And by rising again. Let's quickly, uh, I know I need to be done here uh, very soon, but I want to read what happens next. This is the next just few verses because it's another miracle that Jesus does. And that will set us up for next week uh, to begin at chapter or verse 22 of John chapter 6. So I'll just read it uh, and comment very briefly on it. Uh, verse 16, again, so Jesus escapes the crowds. Because uh, they're, they're wanting to make him king. Um, and so it goes on. Uh, when evening came, his disciples went down uh, to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. So just a few comments here. Uh, the perp there's a few different purposes of these few verses. Uh, first of all, it's a miracle of Jesus. Okay? And in all the miracles of Jesus, it shows uh, who he is and what he's about. Um, number two, it shows that Jesus uh, is or does indeed have command over creation. He can walk on the water. He can calm the wind and the waves. And this is what he does. And, uh, and then 
Thirdly, one of the, the, the most, uh, one of the things Jesus says most often is do not be afraid. That's one of the things that, that he, that is most recorded coming out of his mouth throughout the script, uh, out the, the gospels. Uh, Jesus says, do not be afraid. Even though the wind and the waves are, are crashing around, uh, even though the boat is rocking and threatening to be overturned, Jesus comes in a miraculous way and says, do not be afraid. Okay? And then all of this is done, again, so that his disciples would slowly begin to believe in him, to believe in who he is and what he, he is to do. Why? Because his disciples are going to become the leaders and the fathers of the church when he ascends into heaven. So this is why he, he reveals himself uh, for who he is in, in all of these different ways, but uh, specifically to them, because they're the ones who will continue on the work of the kingdom of God after he ascends into heaven uh, until he comes again in glory. With that, um, for next Sunday, then read John chapter 6, beginning at 22, uh, verse 22, read it to the end. Uh, and we'll talk about Jesus as the bread of life. So we saw Jesus actually giving bread uh, there as he fed the 5,000. Now, and Jesus is going to take that, and he is going to apply miraculous words to it to show uh, that he is the bread of life. But we'll have to wait till next Sunday. With that, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Um, again, tune in in about um, uh, 20 minutes uh, for our service. You'll hear some organ music at about 5-2. Uh, and our service then, our Easter service will begin then. Have a blessing morning.